Oh, I see it. Ah! There's a dropped potato right here. Oh, which potato? Right there. This would probably be a good opportunity to use some of that hay. Yeah. So we're gonna get some potatoes in tonight. Excited, first we'll start here. Root crops can go in pretty early before the last frost date. Uh, for us, that's the end of May. So the one other thing you'll notice, I did take down a bunch of T-posts here. We do what I think they call the Florida weave. We have the T-posts who run wire through there to help have support for tomatoes. Our tomatoes were towards the very front. We actually have strawberries and some great little fruits like that up here in the front. But uh, we're going to put our tomatoes somewhere else this year. It's really important to rotate t tomatoes especially. So our potatoes are actually going to go where our tomatoes were. <laughs> planning on our spacing a lot of times we'll, we'll use is uh, some stakes and some string and it allows us to get a nice straight line we'll put that first line in there and then we'll come in we'll measure off the correct distance put our second line in and we can just kind of continue to rotate as we further uh, move our way down the garden You notice a lot of potatoes are already cut. We did that a couple days ago. Ideally, that's the most recommended thing or the safest method to, to plant your potatoes. You, obviously, you can get a lot of potato seeds by cutting these things up. You're looking to leave a little eyelid on there. But part of the reason you're looking to do this several days in advance is it kind of helps cure that area, kind of calluses over, and helps reduce the risk of any bacteria or fungal infection that can spread to your potatoes. I have to admit, uh, I feel like we're pretty lucky. We have done it many, many times years where we literally cut them up the day of, put them right in the ground and we've had or not noticed any ill effect. We seem to always be pretty successful with our potatoes. But I, I really don't want to say you don't have to do that because soil is very different in uh, all over the world. I mean, even here in Minnesota from where we are to, you know, another part of Minnesota. But we are going to do a little experiment. I'm just out of curiosity. Obviously these ones have been curing, but we're going to cut some up today on the fourth row back here. And we're going to do those ones and see if we notice any difference. Whether uh, maybe production, maybe we lose more plants, I'm not quite sure. That's kind of one of the experiments for this year. First row here, all were ones that we cut several days ago, let them cure over. This is another variety of potato we have here, same sort of deal, all been cured several days ago. This row here, another variety, and then this final row here, all the way up to this point here is one variety that we just cut today going down. The next middle chunk is the red potatoes that go down to this bag here, all cut today, and then vice versa. So this whole entire row uh, we'll just see how this ends up working out. So since our Back to Eden garden is starting to get a little a little thin on chips and, and material, we're actually going to put down a bunch of hay here. We acquired this hay bale from one of the farmers who goes and cuts, cuts hay around here. And we asked him for his oldest moldiest bale. Uh, we used it last year in a big part of our garden for weed control. It really helped a lot. Plus, uh, unlike straw, hay puts a lot of nutrition back into the soil. It's like, you know, composting grass clippings. The one thing you have to worry about though is seeds, you know, if those things are going to sprout. We had pretty good success last year, not much stuff came up. So I think this, this bale is old enough that um, 
hopefully fingers are crossed uh, we're not going to get a bunch of seeds so we're going to go lay a bunch of that stuff over where the potatoes are <laughs> Seagulls were dancing all around I woke up with a sunrise on the sea Such a precious gift to me The salty breeze and the waves The slow pace The salty breeze and the waves I'm out of my place So you can see this is looking pretty good. We got Troublemaker here on water duty. We packed it pretty thick and then we left it a little thin where the actual rows are. And once this stuff starts coming up, we'll come back in, we'll pack things in. But really want to make sure that we got uh, plenty of stuff to help knock down the weeds and, and put some nutrition back into the soil as well. So what's this cool trick you wanted to show me? You know you have to hold it. Hold it. It's trying to go down. And then well, good job, everybody. We cracked that out pretty quick. 